for you. Ouch. That's Mitt Romney, what a country club would look like as a person. He's a senator from Utah and the proud owner of some binders. Willard Mitt Romney was born in 1947 in Detroit, Michigan, to George Romney, the self-made millionaire, successful auto executive, and three-time governor of Michigan. The family moved from Detroit to the affluent suburb of Bloomfield Hills by the time Mitt was in kindergarten. The Romneys come from a long line of Mormons. Mitt is a sixth-generation member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. He's the great-great-grandson of Miles Romney, who converted when the religion was just a few years old. Today, Mitt, his wife Anne, and their five boys, Tag with two Gs, Matt, Josh, Ben, and Craig, are deeply subscribed to Mormonism. Some believe that such a confession of my faith will sink my candidacy. If they're right, so be it. In seventh grade, Mitt enrolled at Cranbrook School, an elite boys' school in Bloomfield Hills where the students wore ties and carried briefcases. But I know something about you. You went to Cranbrook. That's a private school. In Mitt's six years at the school, he was focused on pulling off epic pranks. He once staged an elaborate fancy dinner on a busy road, which seems like more of a prank on him, as roads are possibly the worst place to have dinner. There was also one reported prank that went too far. According to the Washington Post, a new student one year behind Romney was bullied for his presumed homosexuality. The student had bleached blonde hair that fell over one eye, and Romney just couldn't handle that. He told a friend, he can't look like that, that's wrong, just look at him. Romney reportedly pinned the boy down and cut his hair as he cried. Decades later, Romney apologized. I participated in a lot of hijinks and pranks during high school, and some might have gone too far, and for that, I apologize. Stick to fancy street dinners, Mitt. A few days before graduation, Mitt informally asked his high school sweetheart, Ann Davies, to marry him. Ann said yes, but she still had two years left of high school, and Mitt was off to California to attend classes at Stanford. Straight-laced Mitt stood out in the 1960s San Francisco Bay Area like a Vampire Weekend fan at a Metallica concert. The LDS student, donning a blazer and tie, showed up to a city thriving off LSD parties hosted by the Merry Pranksters. As protests against the United States' involvement in the Vietnam War grew around campus, Romney stood on the other side. He was in favor of the war, possibly because he received several student deferments. In 1966, Romney left Stanford for France, where he went door-to-door -door as a missionary in an effort to to spread the word about Jesus Christ, the guy who everyone already knows about. While Mitt was away, his father ran for president unsuccessfully before going to work in the Nixon administration as U.S. Secretary of Housing and Urban Development. Upon his return from France, Mitt transferred to BYU, where his high school sweetheart and recently converted Mormon, Anne, was taking classes. They married in an LDS temple, but Anne's parents weren't allowed inside because they were not Mormon. In 1971, Mitt went to graduate school at Harvard, where he obtained a joint JD-MBA degree, graduating in the top 5% of his law class. From Harvard, Romney entered the world of financial consulting. He began at Boston Consulting Group in 1975. In 1977, he started working at a firm called Bain & Company. He spent six years there before helping found a new investment firm with Bain & Company called Bain Capital. Romney's time with Bain Capital showed that he borrowed giant sums of money to take over failing companies before leaving them with debt. There's nothing wrong with profit, by the way. In 1994, after making millions and millions of dollars through questionable business dealings with Bain, Romney decided to follow in his father's footsteps and run for Senate. Romney spent a couple of million dollars of his own on the campaign, but it wasn't enough. He told his brother afterwards, I never want to run for something again unless I can win. I have just called President Obama to congratulate him on his victory. In 2002, he ran for governor of Massachusetts on a new message of being a normal normal run-of-the-mill guy. TV ads painted an image of Romney as a cool, shirtless, blue-collar dad. Yeah, he's bad, but he's a fabulous grandfather. After being the kind of normal dad who spends six million dollars of his own money on a campaign, Romney won the race and became governor of Massachusetts. As governor, Romney worked hard for the state, while at the same time positioning himself for a presidential run. The Atlantic notes, by his third year in office, it was apparent Romney's priorities lay elsewhere. He turned against abortion rights and took stands against stem cell research and gay marriage and began turning up in states like Iowa. His approval rating dropped to 39%, which is bad. By 2007, people's suspicions about Romney's next move were confirmed. He threw his hat in the presidential race of 2008. Despite flip-flopping on issues, he won 11 primaries and caucuses, receiving about 4.7 million votes before falling short to American Patriot and Wedding Crashers actor John McCain. But Romney soon came crawling back. He jumped into the 2012 presidential race, and things were looking good. He was even endorsed by a former steak salesman. So, Governor Romney, 
Go out and get him. But according to the former steak salesman, Romney begged him for the endorsement. He was begging for my endorsement. I could have said, Mitt, drop to your knees. He would have dropped to his knees. This time, Romney secured the Republican nomination and became the first Mormon presidential nominee of a major political party. But shortly after naming amateur weightlifter Paul Ryan as his running mate, a damaging video of Romney surfaced. There are 47% of the people who will vote for the president no matter what. All right, there are 47% who are with him, who are dependent upon government, who believe that, that they are victims, who believe that government has a responsibility to care for them, who believe that they are entitled to health care, to food, to housing, to you name it. But that's it's an entitlement, and the government should give it to them. And they will vote for this president no matter what. After severe backlash, Romney said his words were inelegantly stated, then a short time later added, I said something that's just completely wrong. He continued his wrong streak in the debates. The president just said something which, which is that on the day after the attack, he went to the Rose Garden and said that this was an act of terror. You said in the Rose Garden, the day after the attack, it was an act of terror. Get the transcript. It, 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 he did, in, in fact, sir. So let me, let me call it an act of Can terror. Can you say that a little Garden, louder, Candy? Obama won re-election handily. One thing that certainly didn't help Romney along the way was a harrowing story involving his adorable dog. During a 1983 family vacation, Mitt drove 12 hours with his Irish setter, Seamus, on top of the car. My guess is he liked it a lot better in his kennel than he would have liked it inside. During this 650-mile road trip, Seamus had diarrhea that trickled down the windows of their station wagon. Romney pulled over and hosed down the car and the dog. It's unclear if he took Seamus out of the kennel or just left him up there when he watered him down. Either way, that seems bad. When 2016 came, Romney didn't run for president, but he was actively launching attacks on a steak salesman who was. Here's what I know. Donald Trump is a phony, a fraud. His promises are as worthless as a degree from Trump University. When Trump won the 2016 presidential election, Romney came crawling back to the man he just roasted, reportedly in hopes of being Trump's Secretary of State. Uh, I've had a, uh, a wonderful evening with uh, President-elect Trump. But Trump went instead with Rex Tillerson, who would go on to reportedly call the president a moron. Knowing he'd need a Republican in the Senate, Trump put his love-hate relationship with Romney on hold and endorsed his 2018 run. But to win, Romney would have to shake off his unnerving demeanor. To many, Romney came across as out of touch, with an almost animatronic vibe about him. A former aide chalked it up to being born into a wealthy family. He has lived a charmed life. It is a big challenge that he has, connecting to folks who haven't swum in the same rarefied waters that he has. His attempt to connect was ever so apparent during the 2018 campaign for Senate when Romney spoke to supporters the same way an AI who just found out about meats would. My favorite meat is hot dog, by the way. That is my favorite meat. My second favorite meat is hamburger. And everyone says, oh, don't you prefer steak? It's like, I know steaks are great, but I like hot dog best, and I like hamburger next best. His speech on meat, human or not, may have helped him secure that Senate seat. Romney easily won with Trump's endorsement and then once again turned his back on him. Romney wrote a fiery piece in the Washington Post berating Trump's character. The title of the piece? The President Shapes the Public Character of the Nation, Trump's Character Falls Short. The President fired back with a tweet accusing Romney of being a loser flake. Here we go with Mitt Romney, but so fast, question will be, is he a flake? I hope not. It's unclear with so much back and forth whether Romney will be leading the Republican resistance against Trump, or whether he flips back to the Romney who fights with Trump. Either way, this guy who just found out about Hot Dog is gearing up for something.